the Athlon 64 was not a revolutionary processor. Its revolutionary feature, the 64-bit K8 architecture it's based on, was launched a year earlier in the first generation op- <laughs> Hello! Uh, this video got away from me, in kind of a big way. Originally, this was going to release in early March, with the other entries in the overclocking build-off. It's going to use three different Athlon 64s with three different core revisions, and show you the increase in scaling you get as the revisions got newer. From the original 939 Clawhammer to Venice to the San Diego 1 Meg core. But that didn't happen. Well, it sort of did, but not for the reasons I wanted it to happen. This overclocking showcase ended up being a showcase of my poor overclocking hardware, especially my RAM, which held back the entirety of testing. In the interest of not wasting your time, here's a quick version of what happened. Things got off to a bad start pretty much immediately when I installed this RAM right here. The motherboard refused to boot with this installed, and I had to size down to two 256 meg sticks to even get it to boot. Little did I know at the time, but this was foreshadowing. Then my claw hammer overclock hit a wall at 2.4 GHz, and I assumed it was the CPU, because I've always heard that K8 runs out of steam fast and has really no overclocking overhead. But then I started tackling Venice E6, and I had the same results. I was frustrated at this point and skipped right ahead to San Diego. This one, I thought, this one would have the OC potential I was looking for. Then it hit the same wall, and I started looking where I should have looked at the start. My RAM. I started trying to OC that terrible cheap RAM, and I made some headway, but it was not great, and I stalled out again at just 2.5 GHz. Which isn't nothing, but this was not my proudest overclocking moment. So then I went and I spun up this long, rambly video talking about the Athlon 64's history and just hand-waving the overclocking results, and it wasn't the video I wanted to release. And then Marchintosh happened, and this video got backburnered. So now it's April, and this video is a month and a half overdue. So let's dive into the San Diego results and see what worked and the results I ended up getting. My final result on San Diego was 2508 MHz with a 228 MHz front side bus. And DRAM speed, and that's the key. The RAM I had really didn't want to push higher than this, and I had to add a frankly alarming amount of voltage to it to make it stable at these speeds. Oh, also cooling. By the end of the run, I'd printed out two 70mm fan holders to point fans at the chipset and the RAM, both of which were getting toasty with all the extra voltage. In the end, though, I got some pretty decent gains compared to stock claw hammer at 2.2 GHz. So let's take a look at the performance the system finally got at 2.5 GHz with a couple of games and some benchmarks. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please click the like button. If you want to see more shenanigans with old computers, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. I will see you in the next video.
Have a great night. Then it hit the same wall, and I started looking where I should have started looking at the start. My God, that's terrible. That's not, nope, that's not how that, that's not how that was written. <laughs>